my dear friends i am taking 12th question of paper first that is k5001 what are fundamental rules of pleading this is a most important question of first semester first paper according to order 6th rule 2 of cpc fundamental rules of pleadings are as follows so there are four fundamental rules of pleading and now i am taking one by one first fundamental rule of pleading every pleading must state the facts and not the law an analysis of this rule shows that it has two parts my dear friends the first fundamental rule of pleading contains two part one is positive and the second is negative the positive part of the rule directs that pleading must state facts while the negative part states that a pleading must not state law it is a well settled rule that in pleading only facts have to be stated and not the law the implication is that the following things should not be stated in the pleading first provisions of law second conclusions of law third conclusions of mixed law and facts a pleading is not required for the obvious reason that the courts are bound to take judicial notice of the law applicable to the facts pleaded by the parties my dear friends in first fundamental rule of pleading there are two parts one is positive second is negative the applicant have to submit only the facts in the courts through plaint and second part is of law this is the duty of the court to apply the law according to the facts submitted by the parties so this is the first fundamental rule of pleading my dear friends second second fundamental rules of pleading every pleading must state all the material facts and material facts only an analysis of this rule shows that it has three aspects my dear friends this second fundamental rules of pleading contain three aspects first every pleading must state the material facts only the first rule which i have given just now the first rule had directed that pleading must contain facts but in second the second rule emphasizes that every pleading must state material facts only so the here the first question arises in this regard is what is the question what facts are material so the definition of material facts is the answer given by the code is that material facts are those facts which a plaintiff must allege in order to show a right to sue and a defendant must allege in order to constitute the defense i think this concept is clear of material facts the facts which are submitted by the plaintiff in the courts in order to sue a court and facts which will be submitted by the defendant in order to constitute the defense 
because both party will submit their answer so this these are the material facts which will be which are submitted by the plaintiff as well as the defendant my dear friends i am taking third aspect of fundamental rule of pleading second now in second aspect i think the voice was obstructed by the sound system so in again i am repeating the second aspect it is a judgment of the supreme court that if any party omits the facts so the court cannot reach to the accurate judgment so it is the duty of both the parties not to conceal the fact they have to put real facts before the courts so that the decision may be given true so this was the second aspect of the second fundamental rules of pleading now third aspect every pleading must state only those facts which are material at the present stage of the action see here the last aspect of the second fundamental rule of pleading directs that a pleading should only state facts which are material at the present stage of the action without reference to the possible objection of the opposite party here this is important without reference to the possible objection of the opposite party it is not necessary to anticipate the answer of the adversary which according to her cj is like leaking before one comes to the style my dear friend this is the third aspect of the second fundamental rule it means second fundamental rule of pleading contains three aspect first aspect second aspect and third aspect i have taken three aspect of second fundamental rule now i am taking third fundamental rule of pleading what is the third fundamental rule of pleading 
every pleading must state the facts on which the party pleading relies and not the evidence by which they are to be proved this rule directs that every pleading shall contain a statement of facts on which the party relies for his claim or defense but not the evidence by which they are to be proved it means party must relies both the party must relies on the facts on the not the evidence so facts are very necessary so no need to think about the evidence first they have to put the real facts or accurate material facts to the court then the evidence can be realized can be taken in the court my dear friends we are discussing the third fundamental rule of pleading and in third fundamental rule of pleading i am taking two examples of form it was pointed out in williams versus wilcox a party need not set out the evidence whereby he proposes to prove the facts relied, relied upon by him second example though as observed by the cotton lj in philips versus philips that it is absolutely essential that the pleading not to be embracing to the opposite party and should state the those facts which will put him on his guard and tell him what he will have to meet when the case comes on for trial the view taken in these two english cases here you say here you see the view taken in these two english cases has been approved of by the courts in our country also in a number of cases and it has been held that a pleading should state only the material facts not the evidence for proved them my dear friends the third fundamental rules of pleading is this and this rule is pleaded by the two evidence set out the evidence set out by not set out by the evidence where he proposes to prove the facts relied relied upon the facts my dear friends there are two examples william versus wilcox and philips versus philips by these two examples this third fundamental rules is proved and this fun, these examples of english people or england our country also obeyed these example and these examples taken the view of these examples of two english cases has been approved of by the courts in our country in a number of cases so this was the this is the third fundamental rule of pleading i am taking fourth fundamental rule of pleading now my dear friends fourth fundamental rule of pleading this is a very important rule of pleading every pleading must state the material facts concisely but with precision and certainty there are two things 
mentioned in this fourth fundamental rule of pleading that the facts should be sharp and facts should be accurate short concise and precise short and accurate this rule points out two question two requisites of a good pleading conciseness and precision and certainty these are the two requisites of this fourth fundamental rule as pointed out by palje of the calcutta high court the pleading not only need be concise he says that pleading need not be concise they must also be precise it means these two condition must be satisfied concise and precise it means short and accurate now i am taking these two requisites one by one first conciseness conciseness or brevity which as it is said is the soul of wit and also is the soul of the pleading this conciseness is the soul of wit as also the soul of pleading but precision and certainty should not be sacrificed as at the altar of brevity this is the condition my dear friend but the precision and certainty should not be sacrificed at the altar of brevity in short necessary brevity can be attained in the three ways first by omitting a very unnecessary allegation second by omitting all unnecessary details when alleging material facts third condition by giving proper attention to the language used in alleging material facts these are the three conditions my dear friends the first requisites of fourth fundamental rule is conciseness now i am taking second condi requisites precision and certainty my dear friends i am taking the second requisite of fourth fundamental rules of pleading precision and certainty this is a, this is the second requisite pleading must be certain clear and accurate as i have told you that precision means accurate so that the opposite party may know the case he has to meet otherwise the principal object of the pleading to ascertain the question at issue between the parties cannot be attained therefore it has been held that the pleading should state the facts with sufficient definiteness so as to enable the opposite party to understand their case he is called upon to meet in the last my dear friend in fact the very object of pleading is to be precise and this implies that if pleadings are vague and not specific no amount of evidence can solve the question my dear friends i have explained four principles four fundamental rules of pleading in detail the question is lengthy but i have tried to make the concept clear of all the fundamental rules of pleading now my dear friends my channel my channel name is maths by dharmveer singh dabas and it is my request to you in the end please subscribe the channel i shall be very thankful to you